folks over at TOTL Games, Total Games, in Portland, Oregon, offered to let me borrow an Analog Super NT, which is an FPGA-based Super Nintendo clone system. This bad boy was originally released in 2018 and originally retailed for $190. However, there haven't been any new consoles made in a while, and their particular copy goes for $499, which is quite a bit. Since it's an FPGA-based clone system, it recreates the Super Nintendo Super Famicom with absolutely zero lag with crisp, perfect HDMI output. It also has amazing compatibility and plays every single game that works on a legitimate Super Nintendo without any problems or errors. I tried a lot of obscure games and they all work flawlessly. This thing is small, but it is physically heavy and full of some pretty complex hardware. So that's what it looks like when it boots up. There's also a copy of Super Turrican and Super Turrican Director's Cut built into every single console. There are pretty advanced resolution mode options with various aspect ratios and refresh rates, both NTSC and PAL. And there are as all the aspect ratios you could ever want, including an array of scalers. There is no built-in analog output. However, there is pretty advanced scanline generators for virtual scanlines. And analog does have their own DAC if you really want to hook up an analog display to this thing, but it is an additional hardware purchase. Here is the Japanese version of Yoshi's Island using one mode of scan lines. Looks pretty good. I prefer to run on, on CRT, but absolutely excellent option for running on an HDMI based LCD TV. Here is Street Fighter 02, also known as Street Fighter Alpha 2. This is one of the biggest Super Nintendo games and it actually uses some special chips, also like Yoshi's Island. I wanted to see if it had decent compatibility and it ran like a champ. Now here is my Super Game Boy and it outputted incredibly crisp, very accurate output with Super Game Boy support. However, I wasn't able to get the sound working or it wasn't working by default. I did a basic Google search and I saw that other people didn't have any problems getting their Super Game Boy to work with audio output. So there's probably a setting somewhere to enable external audio sources because the Game Boy, the Super Game Boy is an actual real Game Boy placed inside a cartridge. The ever-fabulous Marky Chan had her copy of Spanky's Quest and wanted to give it a shot. The Analog NT had absolutely no problem running this quintessential monkey-based action puzzle game. I think this is Talking Parodius. And this one has a hard time emulating, has a hard time running on flash carts, but it absolutely worked on here. This is a legit cartridge, and all of the crazy talking and sound effects came across just fine. It's also an amazing game. Tried out my Super EverDrive. I think this is a X6 and it worked just fine. 
The Analog Super NT had absolutely no problem playing a game off an EverDrive. In fact, I actually recommend using an EverDrive if you have one of these things. Since the console is stylishly black and the Killer Instinct cartridge is also stylishly black, I had to give it a shot. Also, I don't really need an excuse to play Killer Instinct. It's a rare game, but it's awesome. Very 90s. It doesn't get more 90s than Killer Instinct. So there is no built-in wireless, so if you want to use a Bluetooth or wireless controller, you have to actually use a dongle one. I prefer the 8-bit though 2.4G wireless. This is a really, really high quality, well-made Super Nintendo. Nothing more, nothing less. There is the option to hack it and run additional games off the SD card, but if you're going to go do down that dark route, I don't know why you wouldn't just get a EverDrive instead. My problem with analog, they have the perception of making really high quality consoles, and they do. The problem is that they don't make enough of them. So if you had the option of buying one of these units back when it was new and getting one for $190, then it's an absolute great deal. I don't really think it's worth paying $500. There's also no save states. So if you're gonna want save states, then make sure you get an EverDrive that supports it. This is a really good, high quality FPGA based Super Nintendo. It's not quite for me. I'm pretty happy with either the clone systems to play original cartridges, or I have a Super Famicom with a real basic $35 Hyperkin Super Nintendo to HDMI adapter, which does a pretty good job for me. So if you are lucky enough to get one of these at the original price point, I tip my hat to you. Analog is an interesting company, but I haven't quite found one of their products which is going to be right for me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is 8-Bit Joystick. Stay awesome. Play Retro.